DLRs, what's going on, Mike Boards? Welcome to Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We are working on a Mercruiser Outdrive, and this is part five of the lower unit rebuild. Let's get started. DIYers, here we are back at it again. This is part five of our full lower unit rebuild, and we just got all our new parts back from the local marina, and we're going to continue the project. To a closer look, and to the left side of the lower unit, there is our old bearing and thrust ring that came out of our old and badly damaged bearing carrier. And there's the new bearing carrier, the gear, and the thrust ring. And again, this is the reverse gear. We'll install that later in the project. However, to the right side of the lower unit, here is our brand new drive shaft and propeller shaft with the bearing, gear, clutch dog, and shift mechanism. We are going to reposition that and lubricate it prior to installing it back into the lower unit. I've now repositioned the entire propeller shaft and there is a closer view of the bearing and the rollers. And that gold piece, again, that is the shift mechanism that your internal shift crank goes into. And that is what moves the entire clutch dog as you shift from forward, neutral, and reverse. Again, this is the forward gear. And it looks like the shop was kind enough to lubricate these splines on the propeller shaft prior to installing the clutch dog. As you can see, it moves very nicely. And when put in forward gear, the shift shaft moves the lower shift crank and it pulls this forward and locks this clutch dog in and spins the forward gear. However, again, we are going to lubricate the bearing. Prior to lubricating the bearing, this is what I'm using. Gear lube SAE90. This is the exact gear lube that we put in the lower unit. So why not lubricate it with the exact gear lube we put in our lower unit? that is going to lubricate the gear and bearings. In DIYs, as I do this, I'm going to do my best not to get in your way so you get a good view of this. And it looks like the shaft lubricated the bearing slightly, which is awesome. However, we're going to lubricate it just a bit more so you can see how we do this. And again, all I'm using is the gear lube that we pump inside the lower unit. And set that aside. And as the gear oil flows out, I'm basically going to rub the roller bearings. And I'll pump just a little bit more. And I'll really allow the gear loop to get inside the bearings and rollers. And yeah, you're going to get a little messy. Wear some gloves. As you can see, don't pump too much because then it'll get really messy. And there is no need to do that. And again, as I work this gear loop inside, I'm rotating the bearings as best I can. And just do this the entire way around. And I'm back to where I started. So I've gone the entire way around the bearing and I'm going to cap this off and shift that aside. And again, without getting dirty, just kind of move the bearing. And that is going to allow the gear loop to work itself into the roller bearings. And don't spin it too fast because you may get gear lube flying out and onto you or onto any surface that you do not want it on. So again, be careful. Time to clean up and install this inside the lower unit. And what I would do next, I would advise to lubricate the splines of the propeller shaft. However, again, it looks like the shop did a very good job on that. We're going to not do that. Coming inside now and to the rear portion of the inner case. Again, that is your shift crank and you want to make sure it is shifted to the left because as we lift up the propeller shaft and shift it into this lower case, this part right here needs to attach or lock onto that shift crank. And the only way to do that per the service manual is having that to the left, for example. Don't have it to the right, have it to the left. Next, I'll grab a flashlight. This is my Browning Buckmark, love that company. Going to turn it on and come up to the drive shaft cavity and rest it in place to hopefully give you a better view of it. And again, this is heavy, so be careful. And just carefully shift this in. And again, the propeller shaft will be shifted to the left of the case to allow that locking mechanism to attach onto the inner crank. And once it's all the way back, shift it to the center. I'll carefully let go from here. We need to go inside, double check how it looks, and then we will begin shifting that shift shaft to ensure that that locking mechanism is properly positioned on the shift crank. Coming back inside, there's a better view of it, and so far so good. And DIYs, we're not actually going to cover the shimming process because we did not pull the bearing racer carrier that the bearing on the back side of that forward gear seats into. And in addition, our serial number engine may be different than yours. So it is extremely important to reference your service manual or owner's manual for your exact serial number engine. And with that said, if all looks good down here, what we're going to do is we're going to come up top and we're going to rotate the shift shaft to ensure that the clutch dog 
inside here shifts back and forth. First thing you want to do is ensure that the propeller shaft itself is as center in the lower unit cavity as possible. Then we'll come up top and shift the shift shaft back and forth to again ensure that the clutch dog shifts back and forth as shown here. And that is exactly how it is supposed to work. Taking a step back and making progress, what we'll do next is install the drive shaft and pinion gear. Here is our drive shaft and bearing, and there is the pinion gear, and there is the pinion gear nut and washer. Let's go ahead and open it. Pinion nut and washer have been removed from the packaging. On the left-hand side is the pinion gear. New washer again. Do not ever use your old washer. And then the pinion nut. And let's take a look at the actual nut. It has a machine groove or what's called a shoulder engravement on one side of the nut, as you can see here. If I flip it to the opposite side, there is a slight indent. However, not like this cut. This part is going to mate with the washer and face up and mate with this portion of the pinion gear. Next, I grab the pinion nut adapter tool and I've got the pinion nut and washer. I'm going to carefully slide this in place. As shown here, we are going to use the Loctite 271 thread locker on the pinion nut thread. And let's go up top and down inside the drive shaft cavity, you'll see the pinion bearing down there. I'll scroll in. You can see the needle bearings as well as the cardboard sleeve. We are going to leave that in and as we shift the drive shaft down the cavity and inside the bearing, the actual diameter of the drive shaft will push that cardboard sleeve out and then we will retrieve it down below and pull it out. Next, I shifted the adapter tool, pinion nut, and washer aside focusing on the drive shaft bearing as well as the lower splines. I've got two 4C. I'm going to lubricate the lower splines of the drive shaft. And that is what it looks like. And I'm just going to grab a little and work it into the splines. Do not get any grease on the actual thread where the pinion nut will screw into. And again, do not overdo this. Just apply the grease to the splines, nowhere else. I'll go ahead and cap the grease off, set that aside. We are now going to grab the SAE 90 gear lube. And again, this is the exact gear lube we put in the lower unit. So why not lubricate it with the exact gear lube that we put in the lower unit? We are going to take the cap off and we are going to lubricate the roller bearings on this drive shaft bearing. And just like the grease here, do not overdo it. I'll just apply some friendly pressure to the pump on the cord and you will see the grease come out. Again, just pick the drive shaft up and lubricate those roller bearings and that is lubricated. Coming back up top and carefully lower the drive shaft down the drive shaft cavity and it's making contact with the cardboard sleeve as well as bearing. I'm slowly allowing just the weight of the shaft to push down on that cardboard sleeve to push it out. I'll now go down below with the other hand and pull that sleeve out. Coming back down below and here is where we're at right now. You can see the lower portion of the drive shaft. What we'll do now is carefully insert the pinion gear and align it with the splines. We will need to pull up on the shaft to give the pinion gear clearance and we are not going to push the pinion gear all the way onto that lower spline area. And that's per the service manual. And here is the little cardboard sleeve. With the pinion gear in hand, as you can see here, we are going to shift it inside the lower unit cavity upside down like this. And again, we are going to carefully pull up on the drive shaft to allow this pinion gear to shift in place and align the internal splines. And just be patient. This does not happen within seconds. You have to just carefully align it. And to get better clearance, I shifted the propeller shaft to the left. In addition, as I shift that pinion gear down the cavity, I'm wiggling the propeller shaft and that is moving the clutch dog as well to give me more clearance to push that pinion gear into place. Coming back inside and to ensure the pinion gear splines are aligned and in place with the lower drive shaft splines, ever so slightly rotate the drive shaft and the pinion gear and forward gear should rotate. As shown here, that's all I'm going to do. Back to the pinion nut washer and tool, I'm going to apply the Loctite 271 to the pinion nut thread. and do not overdo this. As you can see, it is a red liquid. And here is a close-up of it. 
Again, do not overdo it. As you can see, what I applied is not dripping out the bottom, which is good. We are now going to shift this adapter tool on the propeller shaft and down the cavity and onto the clutch dog. And I'm going to lubricate the inner portion of this tool because it does go over the clutch dog. And all I'm using is the same gear lube. And don't get any of this lube on the actual nut. I changed camera angles and I'm going to again shift this all the way down onto the clutch dog. I'm going to lift up on the drive shaft the tool has now made contact with the clutch dog and just some friendly pressure to shift this into place. Coming back inside for a close-up, as you can see, the adapter tool is shifted all the way on and securing that nut. And the nut has screwed a few turns onto the lower thread of the shaft. And from here, this is the top bearing race or carrier that is going to go up top on the actual bearing. Next, I've got the new bearing carrier, thrust ring, and reverse gear. And I'm going to lubricate the inner seals here. We are going to install this bearing carrier backwards. And this is going to do two things. As we talked about in previous videos, it is going to help stabilize the propeller shaft as we tighten the pinion nut on the shaft, as well as apply pressure to the tool to alleviate it from shifting off that nut. And it is in and flush with the tool. Back up top and do yourself a favor, inspect the bearing and shaft inside the cavity. Make sure all looks good. We are going to grab the carrier, carefully shift that over the shaft, and do our best to align it as best we can inside the cavity over the bearing. And it rests right in place, flush with the top portion of the bearing. So if it's not going in, carefully pull it up, realign it, and allow it to drop in place. Next, we will grab the retainer and carefully shift that over the shaft and drop it in place. Next to the retainer nut tool, carefully slide that down the shaft. Align the bottom teeth with the retainer, and you'll carefully align the retainer with the thread and screw it hand tight. And it is now hand tight. Now we need to grab the torque wrench and apply 100 pounds to the torque wrench, and we have set it to 100 pounds and zeroed it out right here, as you can see, flush with the 100 line. And we will align this connection to the tool. And we will begin screwing everything tight. And again, 100 pounds. You will know it's at 100 pounds when you have a lot of pressure and this tool makes a clicking sound. I'm going to remove the tool and realign the actual part here to give me better leverage and tool back in place. And 100 pounds is quite a lot. There it goes, as you heard that click. I'm going to immediately remove the torque wrench. To a closer view, we are going to shift this tool off the shaft. And that's what it looks like down in there. From here, we are going to install this adapter on the very top spline, and we are going to torque the lower pinion to between 60 and 80 pounds. Back to the torque wrench, and as of right now, it is set to 60. I'm going to set it to 65. You can see one, two, three, four, five. Now it is set to 65. Coming back up top, I've got a large 32 inch socket. Rest that in place, and again, torque it to 65. And we will know it's at 65 when the torque wrench clicks. I now feel the tension. There it goes. Immediately remove the torque wrench. Coming closer in DIYers, that took every bit of strength I had. Go ahead and remove this from the upper splines. Set that aside. And we are now going to carefully remove the bearing carrier from the propeller shaft. And as like everything else, just be careful as you pull the bearing carrier out. You don't want to damage anything. And again, those internal seals of the bearing carrier are hugging tight to the propeller shaft. So you may need to give it some friendly pressure or a friendly jolt. Just like that. Be careful as you shift this out. You do not want to harm those inner seals. Set that aside. And from here, the internal pinion nut tool has a good grip of that clutch dog. So some friendly jolts to remove this may be required. 
just like that. I'll go ahead and clean this up. Coming back inside, I do want to show you the clearance between the pinion gear nut and the clutch dog and propeller shaft. As you can see here, the proper gap in between the two is set. And what I want to do now is go up top and rotate the drive shaft. And you will see the pinion gear and forward gear, as well as clutch dog and propeller shaft all turn. And make sure nothing is binding up and it is rotating freely. And the teeth of the pinion gear are properly set in the forward gear. And coming up top, I do want to show you the finished product of the retainer, the bearing, and the race, as you can see here, properly torqued to factory specifications. And I will rotate the shaft so you can see. It moves freely, as shown here. And DIYers, we still have a lot to do. However, this finishes up part five. And down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, are links to purchase these items. Definitely check those out. Part six is also scrolling above right now. We've got to install the bearing carrier, prop, and more. Definitely check that out. We hope to see you there. From here, do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.